should you be aware of what things might cost when writing scripts? And uh, again, a bit about maybe a bit about, about the distribution question was you know, sort of how do you get it made? Um, okay, well, I think there's, there's two things. If you're writing a script just to practice your craft of screenwriting, you can write about whatever interplanetary alien battles, you know, the, you know, hordes of the undead coming out of the ground, whatever. Write your script, great. But if you're writing something with a view to making it, you have to have one eye on the budget, one eye on production going, yeah, but how can we do that? Um, which is where keeping it simple comes in yeah. and, and, and kind of going, what can we do? Um, you know, I've read scripts before where, like I said, you know, there's kind of like a post-apocalyptic thing and there's a 50-foot wall around a city and they, someone send it to me and they go, I want to make this film. And I'm like, immediately, I don't know, how are you, how are you doing that? You're, you're either building a 50-foot wall or you're doing it in CG. How's, how are you going to execute that? Mm. Um, and I always remember, uh, I had a script once for one of my students a long time ago, and it was a short film that he wanted to make. And the opening lines were, the four police cars come to a screeching halt outside the burning house. And right. I smiled, <laughs> and I was like, okay. And I said, how are you going to do this? And he goes, well, I'll get the police cars and they come to a stop and the house is on fire. And I'm like, yeah, but how are you going to do that? And if you break that down, you go, okay, so we need to, you know, unless you're dabs with the policeman who can get you four police cars, but you're talking then, cordon off a road, getting the police, you're looking at stunt coordinators, trying to coordinate the cars coming to a screeching halt so no one gets injured. How are you going to do the burning house? I said, how are you going to do the fire? And he goes, oh, it doesn't have to be fire, it can just be smoke. And I'm like, okay, say you put a smoke bomb in the window of the house you're filming at. What does Mrs. Jones at number 63 think when she looks across the street and she sees smoke coming out of that house? She's going to think the house is on fire. So what's she going to do? She's going to call the fire brigade. Yeah. So then you're into letting the police and fire brigade know that you're filming that don't be alarmed. Oh, sorry. Yeah, not in the film, Mrs. Not, Jones. Yeah. In actual Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones at number 63 yeah. is going to go, oh, there's yeah, a fire yeah. over there, because she might be able to see the camera crew. You'd have to go around to every house with a letter to so say that you were... So you've got to go around to every house. So, and that's before the action. No one's opened their mouth yet. So it's about what are you, how are you going to execute that? How are you going to do it? And we all fall into that trap. I did something in the show a couple of years ago where I wrote the script where it said the group, they break into a museum and they break the display cabinet with a baseball bat. That's one line of text. There we are, I sat in my bedroom writing that, gold, right? How are you gonna do that? So when you break it down, this is what happened, right? We're filming in this museum in Bristol. I'd have to put a call into a special effects company down in Devon and say, I want some sugar glass, because that's how they make glass, which can break. This is the dimensions of the display cabinet, okay? And they say, okay, it's gonna cost you X amount of money. Now, do you buy one or do you buy two? Yeah, what if something goes wrong? Because if one breaks, you've got nothing left. So then you're into budget constraints. So then we go down, and the guy on the phone, the special effects guy, he said, so then I've got a range of time to go down and collect it. He said, it's in, a, it's in a wooden carton. We've nailed it together. It's all the, you know, kind of polystyrene to protect it. And he said, you need a van to pick it up, because if you put it in your car and you go over a speed bump or you brake harsh, you're gonna, it's going to break. So you need a van strapped down in the back of this van for this carton with this glass in it. OK, OK, so we get the van, we go down and pick up this case. But we're picking it up on a Friday. And the location that we're filming in, we're not filming until the following Monday. So then are we having the van over the weekend, which obviously adds to the higher cost, or are we hiring the van once, dropping it back, then hiring the van again on the Monday to put the case in the back, strap it down. Then we jump to the location. So then we're at the location. How we put, and we've got sheets of glass. How is that coming together? It's not a display cabinet just yet. So then you have to make a call to an art director to see if he's available, she's available, to come along with special glue to put the thing together. And then it got to get put into the in location, then you've got to film it, then you've got to smash it, then you've got to clear away the rubbish. All because some writer went, they smashed the display case with a, <laughs> with a baseball bat. But the cost and the logistical things involved behind that one thing was massive.